in my flesh I will see God. All of the Old Testament theophanies, all these occasions when God was appearing in human form, were themselves part of the, the preparation that God was taking his people through so that they would be prepared for the arrival of God at the time of the Incarnation. Uh, one of the problems that Muslims have when approaching the Incarnation is precisely that they are not uh, students of the Old Testament. They have not learned from the Father through Moses that God can and has appeared and was going to appear. And so when Christians come along and proclaim in Christ the coming of God in the flesh, Muslims respond to this assuming without warrant, without warrant from God, that God can't do this, wouldn't do this, and so forth. Whereas if they had learned from the Father, as Jesus said, they would have come to him. Remember, Jesus in John 5 says, all who learn from the Father come to me. All of this was preparatory. I, I talked about this uh, a week or two ago when I mentioned uh, that the Old Testament was a pedagogue leading people to Christ. For those that want to see that, I think the episode was called The Truth About Muhammad. What I was arguing in that video is that the Old Testament sets forth certain redemptive realities that God is going to accomplish, it sets them forth in types and shadows, in visible ceremonies, all of which were intended to serve a pedagogical purpose. A, a pedagogue in the ancient world was a tutor that people would entrust their children to in order to prepare them for when they attained to maturity, when they would get older and then have to live in the world and, uh, you know, make their way in the world. They had to be prepared to live in society and uh, engage in gainful employment and all the rest. A pedagogue was part of the training for that. And so Paul in Galatians 3 says the law and really the entire Old Testament was a pedagogue, a tutor preparing us for Christ. And so as older Christian theologians from time immemorial, have said these Old Testament theophanies were all like dress rehearsals. They were occasions when the Lord Jesus Christ was trying on, as it were, the apparel of his future incarnation. And he was preparing us, even as he himself was gearing up for that great occasion when he would actually take on human nature in the incarnation. Uh, so the Old Testament, though, is, is preparing for this, but it, it not only does so by means of these typological events, these events in which God assumes human form, but it expressly predicts this. Uh, think, for example, of Job 19, one of my favorite texts in the Old Testament uh, to this end is in Job, when Job is arguing with his counselors who aren't proving to be uh, very helpful to him in his affliction. One of the things that Job says, in, indicative of his, his constant enduring faith in God, even in the midst of uh, his perplexity, right? Job is perplexed at what's happening, but he still maintains his integrity and his faith uh, in, in the midst of all this. And one of the things that he says, this is an anchor for Job's confidence in the midst of all this. He says, as his flesh is withering away, he says, as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will take his stand on the earth. Even after my skin is destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God, whom I myself shall behold, and whom my eyes will see, and not another." So here Job expresses his confidence that even though he's withering away and his flesh is going to be destroyed, in other words, he's going to return to the dust, all right, after his body is dissolved, yet he is in his flesh going to see God. He's going to be raised up. It presupposes a resurrection. And he's going to see God, just like he is raised up in the flesh. He's going to see God. There's going to be a visible appearance of God to him. He refers to him as his redeemer. And notice he says, at the last, he will take his stand on the earth. So here Job envisions a future occasion when God will 
appear before him in human form and take his stand.